California is littered with hundreds of ghost towns from the days of gold and silver mining. The boom of the gold rush led many to the state in search of riches. The inevitable bust is why we are making this video. Many of these towns are still standing, though uninhabited. This week, we will be looking into three of the more popular ghost cities in California. Hello everyone and welcome to Chronicles of Time, a channel that covers both well-known and obscure historical events. If you like what we're doing here, leave a like, a comment, and please subscribe. It really helps the channel. If you have a moment in history you want us to cover, let us know down in the comments. This video is actually from a subscriber, so keep those suggestions coming in. The first California ghost town we will visit is the town of Bodie. Located just northeast of Yosemite and on the border of Nevada, Bodie was established in 1861 after William Bodie discovered gold near what is called Bodie Bluff in 1859. The town started with about 20 miners, and by 1880, the town had grown to 10,000 people. It is estimated that the town of Bodie had 65 saloons. The town had attracted robbers, miners, outlaws, prostitutes, and everything in between. Gambling halls and opium dens also opened with the influx of money coming out of the mines. Hearing about the new boomtown across the country, people slowly started to leave Bodie. Although people started moving from the boomtown, Bodie still produced a ton of gold and silver. It is estimated that $34 million was produced from 1860 to 1941. In today's money, that's $85 million. Profits started falling significantly in the early 1900s. And by 1942, the mines were closed. Non-essential mining across the country was closed because of the Second World War, and in Bodie, the mining never resumed. So what is Bodie now? Well, it's a national landmark and a historic park. 170 buildings still remain on the town of Bodie and has been named as California's official state gold rush ghost town. The town is preserved in a state of arrested decay. Arrested decay means that you only repair to the point that the buildings remain standing. Bodie still sees 200,000 visitors every year, and you can enjoy a great self-guided tour. The next stop on our California Ghost Town tour is Empire Mine. Empire Mine is located in the Sierra Nevada Mountains and is one of the oldest, largest, deepest, longest, richest gold mines in California. This is kind of a hot potato situation. Multiple individuals and companies bought and sold this mine from 1850 to 1956. The most well-known and profitable was William Bowers Byrne II. He had commissioned a man named Willis Polk to design, quote, the cottage in 1897. Now, why was the cottage so important? The cottage included a greenhouse, gardens, fountains, reflecting pool, a clubhouse, tennis courts, a bowling alley, and squash courts. Remember, this is the late 1800s. The Empire Mine had the same fate as Bodie. After the 1950s, inflation made the operation unprofitable. The final year of operation was 1956. The mine hit an incredible depth of 11,007 feet. This ghost town is less of a town and more of a ghost mansion and a ghost mine entrance that you can still visit. It was made a state park in 1974 and it's a must see when you're in the area. Our last ghost town in this video is Cerro Gordo. If you translate Cerro Gordo into English, it means Fat Hill. 
This mine is partially responsible for the growth and economic development of the city of Los Angeles. Originally discovered by a man named Pablo Flores, this mine was more focused on mining silver than gold. Prospectors flooded the area with tales of silver floating around. The silver out of this area was incredibly pure. It was put through a smelter very close to the mine and a tray route was established from Cerro Gordo to Los Angeles. This was known as the Yellow Grade Road. The Los Angeles News in February of 1872 stated, quote, To this city, Cerro Gordo trade is invaluable. What Los Angeles now is, is mainly due to it. It is the silver cord that binds our present existence. Should it be unfortunately severed, we would inevitably collapse. By 1938, the mining had stopped. Cerro Gordo is now privately owned and still has original buildings and artifacts from that time. Thank you for watching Chronicles of Time. We really appreciate the support. As always, leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you like our content. It really does help the channel. We'll see you next time. Cheers, y'all.